Um, let me welcome members to the 21st meeting in 2015 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee and remind everyone uh, to switch off mobile phones as they may affect the broadcasting system. We do have apologies uh, from Dave Thompson today. Uh, agenda item one is for the committee to agree to take items four and five in private. Item four is for members to consider the evidence held on the Scottish Elections Dates Bill. And item five is to consider a note by the clerk on hybrid bills. Do members agree to take these items in private? Agreed. We are agreed. Agenda item two uh, on today's agenda is for the committee to agree to consider in private at future meetings a draft stage one report on the Scottish Elections Dates Bill and draft reports and standing order rule changes on legislation and hybrid bills. Do members agree to take these items in private at future meetings? We are agreed to so do. Uh, that brings us to agenda item three, which is for the committee to take evidence on the Scottish Elections Dates Bill. Uh, joining us today, we have Joe Fitzpatrick, the Minister for Parliamentary Business. Uh, Colin Brown, who is the Senior Principal Legal Officer, the Director for Legal Service, and James Newman, Policy Advisor, Directorate for Strategy uh, and Constitution. Uh, Minister, if you wish to take the opportunity to make an initial statement, I'd be happy to hear it. Okay, thank you, Convener, and thanks for the opportunity to say a few introductory words um, about the Bill before you this morning. Um, as things currently stand, there will be a general election to both the Scottish and UK Parliaments on the 7th of May 2020. This clash is undesirable for a number of reasons. Indeed, the presiding officer wrote to the Secretary of State for Scotland earlier this year, setting out her views, um, supported by all the main party leaders, that, that it is imperative that an alternative date for the Scottish election should be set. The Scottish Government believes it is important that voters know the length of the parliamentary term that they are voting on before they go to the polls in May 2016. That is why the Deputy First Minister and the Secretary of State for Scotland agreed a Section 30 order that transferred the powers to the Scottish Parliament that enabled us to come forward with this bill. Given that the Smith Commission has said what the Smith Commission has said about the powers in relation to elections in Scotland, it is, I think, absolutely right that it should be this Parliament that legislates for changing the dates. Turning to the, the Bill's contents, it is a very short and straightforward Bill. It proposes moving the Scottish Parliament elections currently scheduled for the 7th of May 2020 to the 6th of May 2021. By way of comparison, you will no doubt be aware that both the Welsh and Northern Irish Assembly general elections have already been moved to May 2021 to avoid the 2020 clash. Moving the Scottish Parliament elections to May 2021 would mean that it would clash with the local government elections scheduled for the same date. That is obviously also undesirable, so the Bill proposes moving the local government elections scheduled for the 6th of May 2021 to the 5th of May 2022. I hope colleagues will agree that the Bill presents a straightforward and pragmatic solution to the clash of election dates, and I look forward to answering your questions. Uh, thank you very much, Minister. Uh, perhaps the obvious uh, first question is, in proposing a move uh, for the next but one Scottish Parliament election from 2020 to 2021. Uh, why was the alternative of bringing it forward to 2019 uh, not the one that we see before us? Um, so the proposal for a five-year term mir mirrors the current session. So we currently have fi five years. Um, it also mirrors the um, extensions in Northern Ireland and the Assembly of Wales and, of course, the UK Parliament. And I think a three-year term would be um, particularly short in, in parliamentary terms. Uh, we have uh, seen that you have consulted with a number of uh, bodies of one sort or another, COSLA being a, a fairly obvious one. Um, did any of the organisations consulted with raise any issues with the proposals in respect of the change of dates for either of the elections? I think the, the responses to the consultation were all positive in, in terms of this is just a pragmatic, pragmatic um, solution to the, the clash, but I don't think was there anything negative? The, there were no, no other comments, uh, as the Minister said. All, all the organisations we consulted recognised that this was a straightforward and pragmatic solution to, to the issue. Uh, the, the policy memorandum uh, talks about 
at uh, the government undertaking a consultation on a permanent change to a five-year uh, cycle. Uh, perhaps the obvious question is why are we not doing that in this bill and at this time? The, the obvious answer is because we don't have the powers. Um, and the, the Section 30 order specifically gives us the power for this election. Um, clearly, a permanent solution is something which will need to be um, considered by a future parliament, and it would be appropriate for them to, to, to look at that, both the, a permanent solution in terms of the Scottish Parliament elections and uh, local government. And um, I think that, that's appropriate at that time that the next parliament will, will clearly have, if, if the parliament has those powers, of course, they haven't come yet. Is it anticipated, therefore, that uh, those powers would be provided by a further Section 30 order, or are you anticipating a change uh, via the Scotland Bill that's currently before the Westminster Parliament? As it stands, the Scotland Bill would, would um, give those powers to this Parliament, so if the Scotland Bill is passed and enacted, then those powers would come to this Parliament. Um, but it would, would have been, um, I think, too risky for us to wait till the Scotland Bill is passed to make sure that we have these changes in place in, in good time for this election, and I think that was agreed by both the Deputy First Minister and the Secretary of State for Scotland. Now, I'm given to understand uh, that the Royal Assent for the Scotland Bill, assuming it runs to its present timetable, is likely to be in something like June, in other words, after the next session of the Scottish Parliament has commenced. Is that the government's understanding as well? I, 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 I think the, the risks around um, when that's going to be enacted, it would have been very, very difficult for the, the changes required, this very technical change to be made after that bill, which is why the agreement was made to give us the specific powers of the Section 30 order, which was you know, agreed by the Parliament unanimously as, as the right way forward. Have you come to a conclusion as to when the consultation on permanently changing the date might to take place and that, what the that, format might look that, like? That would clearly be a matter for the, for the next parliament to, to decide in terms of the, the way that should um, happen. Um, obviously, the consultation will, will, would need um, to happen before that. It would need to include local government, of course, because I think it would be very likely that the next parliament would want to look at both the Scottish Parliament elections and the local government elections in parallel, the same as we're doing with this bill, in order to, to, to rectify, to, to, to find a permanent solution. Uh, now, I suspect from what's been said, we already know the answer, but uh, I will ask it anyway. Uh, does the government have a view as to what the cycle should, should be for the two elections in question here? There's a strong argument for five years. However, that would be a matter for the next government. Right. Now, we, we, we do have a piece of correspondence from uh, one of our member, members in Parliament, Dr Richard Simpson, who, who makes the, I'll use the word, interesting suggestion um, that one of the things that could be considered is uh, having European local government and Scottish Parliament elections all on the same day and he suggests there may be mutual benefit to that. Is that something that's um, either no, being no, I, considered I, or will I, be considered? I think that's something that should be resisted at all, all costs. Um, we, we've had the experience in previous elections of um, having more than one election, and um, the conclusion I think the Parliament came to uni universally was to agree with the Gould report that that was not desirable, um, um, and p potentially we'd, one, one, one election would always supersede the other, so I think that should be resisted at all costs. Um, well, it may be worth saying, and I'm not seeking in saying this to formally speak on behalf of colleagues, but informal discussions suggest that perhaps there might be some appetite for revisiting that decision made after the 2007 election. But I just put that in the record for the Minister's information, uh, rather than an, as an attempt to open up a, a discussion at this time on the subject. Interestingly, the clause in the, in the, the Scotland Bill would prohibit such clashes. Right. Oh, that's correct. Interesting. Yeah, and that's the recommendation from the Smith Commission. Oh, well, that might not stop people, uh, so perhaps even myself, yeah. who's not a yeah, huge problem. enthusiast for separation uh, from, of, of these elections from bringing that up at a future date. But that's for another day. Um, anything else any members wish to ask? And any concluding remarks you wish to make, Minister? I think this is just a, a pragmatic um, solution and um, hopefully the, the committee will support it. Um, Minister, without anticipating the contents of our report, I don't think we've had anything today that's alarming the horses, let's put it that way. Thank you very much, very much. Minister. Thank you. Let's spend the meeting briefly. Uh, in fact, is that correct? Uh, we're moving into private session. I beg your pardon.